Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about the different tests by which we can check the potency of the eustachial tube or eustachial tube functions. Uh, in previous video we talked about the eustachial tube anatomy and physiology. The link for that video is there in the description. So you can check it out there. So today we will see what different clinical methods and laboratory investigations are available by which we can check the eustachial tube potency. You are requested to like and share the channel and don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you are not going to miss an important topic. So the functions we discussed last time main important functions one is ventilation the other one is drainage and the third one is protection and uh, there can be problem with these functions by abnormal potency or uh, abnormal closure by functional obstruction or by from outside if compression is there by tumors or adenoids or if there is inflammation of the lining mucosa and submucosa, there can be obstruction and the dilatation or the opening of the eustachian tube may not be proper leading to uh, eustachial tube dysfunctions. So what are different uh, methods available to check the potency of the eustachian tube? Uh, one of the most commonly used method in outdoor clinics, very easy to perform is what we call as Valsalva test. It is based on that if there is positive pressure in the nasopharynx, uh, this will cause the air to enter the eustachian tube and from the eustachian tube, it will be there in the middle ear cavity and the tympanic membrane will move outwards laterally. So if we are looking at the same time through via otoscope at the mobility of the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane will be moving towards us towards the examiner laterally because the pressure in the middle ear is more by the positive pressure which is coming from the nasopharynx and how this positive pressure can be built up simply ask the patient as you can see in the picture as well that close the nose and mouth and try to blow the cheeks so that is the mechanism just simply or in detail you can tell the patient that inhale and then try to exhale forcefully while the nose and mouth is closed because when mouth and nose will be closed and one is trying to exhale that expired air will go towards the nasopharynx from the nasopharynx through the nasopharyngeal end of the eustachian tube into the middle ear and the tympanic membranes will move outwards and by the otoscope we will be looking through the external auditory canal at the mobility of the tympanic membrane which will be moving towards us. So this is what we call as Valsalva test or Valsalva maneuver. Just by the way how to hold the uh, otoscope. So usually uh, the beginners they are asked to hold the otoscope just like a pen as you can see in the left sided picture. There is another grip which is called as hammer grip. This is the hammer grip in the right side picture. But as a beginner you are or as a student you are requested to use it as a uh, pencil. Hold it like a pencil or like a pen. Because even in the hammer grip uh, you can force it inside and if there is any inflammatory process in the external articular patient may feel pain. So this is more sophisticated and more subtle that to hold it like a pen. So if tympanic membrane, for example, is intact on Valsalva, it will move outwards. But if the tympanic membrane is having a perforation as shown in the picture, so what will happen that when the patient will do Valsalva, you will hear a hissing sound because there will be leakage of excessive air through that perforation in the external uh, auditory canal. If there is a discharge in the external, uh, in the middle ear, but tympanic membrane is intact, you will see, uh, you will hear a crackling sound on uh, Valsalva's method. But uh, you can see that this Valsalva, it is only in 65% of the persons they can do this Valsalva. 
especially younger children they could not understand and elder people as well are mentally retarded people they would not be able to understand that what they are actually expecting to do so they may not follow the instruction to inhale forcefully then exhale and then while closing the mouth and uh, nose so in 65% of the people of the population it is uh, possible and rest of 35% usually they don't follow the instructions contraindications for wall cell wise that if there is a atrophic scar of the tympanic membrane thin scar is there it may rupture when there is you know forceful uh, aeration of the middle ear cavity or if the patient is having upper respiratory tract infection that soiled secretions from the nose and nasopharynx uh, can travel towards the uh, middle ear through the eustachian tube so that can that is also an contraindication then there is a test which we call as toynbee's test it is you can say a reverse of valsalva in valsalva we generate positive pressure in the nasopharynx while in this toynbee's test we use the negative pressure and how we can you know do the negative pressure creation in the nasopharynx just simply ask the patient to swallow while the nose is pinched so while the nose is pinched and patient is swallowing there will be negative pressure in the middle ear so when there are negative pressure in the nasopharynx and ultimately there will be negative pressure in the middle ear as well because negative pressure in the nasopharynx it will draw the ear air from the middle ear so negative pressure in the middle ear and there will be inward movement of the tympanic membrane on otoscopy so in valsalva there was outward movement of the tympanic membrane while in toyn bees there will be inward movement of the tympanic membrane another test which we can do is that what we call as pulitzer's test in which this instrument as you can see that this is a balloon and there is a tip this is olive shaped tip of this pulitzer's bag which is introduced into the nostril one nostril on the side of which the tubal function is desired to be tested and usually it is done in children who are unable to perform the wall salva so this uh, tip is it is introduced into one of the nostrils and the other nostril is closed and the bag this bag it is compressed while at the same time the patient swallows or say ek ek so that there will be a movement of the tympanic membrane by means of an auscultation tube a hissing sound is heard in the external auditory canal because the compressed air can be used instead of pulitzer's bag as well and this test is also therapeutically used to ventilate the middle ear as well then is catheterization and insufflation that at the same time you are checking the potency and you are trying to aerate the middle ear cavity also so this is what we call as cni catheterization and insufflation and this is the instrument which is being used this is called as a eustachian catheter this is a blunt end and uh, there you can see a small ring this ring will be towards the this tip of the eustachian tube is directing this ring will be uh, telling us towards which side the tip is directing and uh, how we have to use it we can use it uh, by under local anesthesia the nose is anesthetized and the eustachian uh, and this is the nasal cavity on this side this is the nasal cavity on other side and this is the nasal septum which is separating into the nasal cavity through the interior of the nose we go and we introduce this eustachian catheter into the nasal cavity as the nasal cavity ends and the soft palate comes hard palate finishes this eustachian catheter its tip will you know descend down so when it falls down immediately we will rotate this eustachian tube catheter 90 degree medially 90 degree medially and then we will pull it outwards so when we will pull it outwards it will be struck against the posterior border of the nasal septum here this white 
you know direction of the justicial tip is telling this movement which i am telling you so once you feel the obstruction by the posterior border of the nasal septum then you rotate this eustachian tube catheter at 180 degree exactly laterally so when 180 degree laterally it is you know rotated the tip will be exactly over the eustachial tube opening as you can see in this picture so then you can attach a pulitzer bag here and the air is insufflated and then entry of the air through this eustachian tube catheter through the eustachian tube into the middle ear which is verified by lateral bulging or outward bulging of the tympanic membrane again very briefly i tell you nose is anesthetized along the floor this eustachian tube catheter is going with the tip downwards as the hard pellet finishes it will you know fall down then you rotate it 90 degree medially and you pull it outwards it will feel the posterior border of the nasal septum septum as obstruction there as you feel this obstruction then you rotate this eustachian catheter exactly at 180 degree laterally then it will its tip will be there directing towards the eustachial tube opening on that side similarly you can do it on the other side as well so air is pushed into the eustachian tube catheter by squeezing the pulitzer back and examiner hears by toyn b auscultation tube put in the patient's ear blowing sound when there will be normal eustachian tube patency if there is middle ear fluid then there will be bubbling sound if partial eustachian tube obstruction is there whistling sound will be there and if there is no sound it means complete obstruction of the eustachian tube the complications can be that there can be injury to the eustachial tube opening by this procedure or there can be bleeding from the nose if roughly it is used transmission of the nasal and nasopharyngeal infections into the middle ear or rupture of the uh, atrophic area of the tympanic membrane can be there then some uh, audiological investigations we can go for one is tympanometry that is very important tympanometry in some other uh, video we will talk about in detail about this tympanometry there we you know uh, create a difference of uh, air pressure in the external ear and the middle ear on both sides of the tympanic membrane and then tympanograms that is the graphic presentation is there so if there is a negative pressure in the middle ear that uh, that there will be you know the graph will be you know different tympanogram will, and if there is fluid the graph with tympanogram will be different that is type b graph in case of fluid and that is a flat uh, graph or on the negative side if it is there that is type c graph it is there so accordingly we can have an idea whether there is fluid inside or there is negative pressure only in the middle ear then radiological test if we are suspecting some malignancy for example nasopharyngeal carcinoma which is obstructing the nasopharyngeal end of the eustachian tube or the adenoids for example or some other tumor inside or skull based tumors we can go for radiological test that is especially the ct scan of the uh, uh, skull base then we can use saccharine or methylene blue test that we can if there is a, a perforation of the tympanic membrane we can use them as an ear drops into the external through the external ear into through the perforation they will go into the middle ear and after some time we can see the methylene blue in the nasopharynx or saccharine taste that is a sweet taste will be uh, felt by the patient so that can tell us indirectly the potency of the eustachian tube or we can go for sonotubometry that is the air pressure in measurement of the air present in the uh, eustachial tube so these are different uh, tests by which we can check the potency of the eustachian tube uh, you are requested to like and subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so that they can also get benefit of that and thanks for watching